Hi, and welcome to Smelling Coffee TV, the SmellingCoffee.com blog live and a ministry of First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Mississippi. I'm so glad you joined us. I'm Jennifer Walker, and we have today a guest from our own church, Taylor Summers. He grew up here. He went through um, school here, graduated from Cleveland High, and then went on to Delta State University and graduated. And Taylor is going to share with us today this incredible ministry and mission um, calling that God has placed on his life. Uh, how old are you, Taylor? I'm um, 24 years old. 24. He is 24 years old. I want you to meet Taylor, and I want him to uh, tell you how God has taken um, this guy from Cleveland, Mississippi, all the way over to Kenya in Africa. And at 24 years old, he's doing an incredible thing through Taylor's life. So thank you for joining us, Taylor. I'm so me. excited that you're on the show today. Thank you. All right, Taylor, tell us, how did God get you from Cleveland, Delta State, to Kenya? It definitely wasn't planned. I, I had my dreams growing up. I had a five-year path that I was going down, a job career, the American dream, and God took my heart after my freshman year of college. I did my first mission trip in Africa, and the first night I was in Kenya, I looked over to a best friend of mine sleeping beside me, and I told him that, man, this is where, this is where God is going to place me. So four years down the road, I struggled with believing that. I tried to chase my own dreams, but God always pulled me back in and placed me in Kenya. Two days after I graduated college, I moved off to volunteer with the organization for about six months. And then after that six months, God called me to step into my own ministry. And from that, we started Zoe Children's Tribe, which is based out of Katali, Kenya. That is incredible. So you had not thought about being a missionary or an organization of a ministry not until not, that time? Not at all. It, the furthest thing from it, I grew up my whole life wanting to do something in the government, some sort of law enforcement. Never once that I think I wanted to work in ministry. And so what was, so that you were on a mission trip. Yeah. You, you went to Kenya on a mission trip when the Lord really spoke to your heart. 2013. Wow. 2013. Okay. All right. Well, um, Tell us, um, tell us about um, what did you do? So, I mean, how did you go from getting that call to actually establishing this ministry? And what uh, is this ministry? Tell us about this ministry. Uh, Zoe Children's Tribe is a, is a ministry in 51C3 nonprofit based out of Katali. Uh, what we do is we, we bring orphan and vulnerable children into our tribe. We place them in a sustainable home with a mom and a dad. We educate them, shelter them, feed them, educate them, and connect them with the Word of God. But this, it wasn't easy. Uh, it took a lot of convincing, praying, and talking with people about it that I really felt comfortable with. And eventually, the only thing I could, the only way I can explain it is, it wasn't baby steps, you just had to jump in. And I trusted God back in, when this vision came to me in July 2016, to. Just take baby steps and eventually in November I told people and then we jumped in and got everything legalized and then started telling people, getting in front of churches all around the state and just telling this vision that God had placed in our heart. And from then it's it's been amazing. You've had a lot of support, haven't yes, you? Yes, it's, it's been it's been overwhelming and I, I couldn't be so thankful. Uh, the first year I never would have expected to do as well as we have and it's been nothing short of amazing. And it's been amazing on our end watching, watching this happen and, and praying for you. Um, well, uh, Taylor has a website. It's, it's Zoe, it's Z-O-E, Children's Tribe. Dot org, and you can find out all about it, and we'll put the uh, link up on the screen here. But I, and I do encourage you to go to it, but I want to tell you some things that you'll see when you go there. One of the things that I, I uh, love about the tribe, about this, uh, how you set this up. First of all, tell us what, we were just talking about this before we started recording. I have a dog named Zoe, and I named the dog for the same kind of purpose that he chose this name for this tribe. So tell us how you got the name for this. Oh, it came, just as simple as I can put it, it came July 2016, one, one night, I was sitting in my little one-bedroom house in Katali and reading through John 10, and I came across John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. And I researched that word life right there, and it translated over to Zoe. So in the Greek, life is Zoe, which is life in Christ, so that's where we got our name. 
I love that. And just incidentally, I'll explain why. I mean, my dog is Zoe named Life because she's my empty nest dog. <laughs> so she was bringing life back into our house. But I love your Zoe uh, code. Um, I want to read through this and Taylor's going to share something about it. Uh, the first thing in the Zoe code is it's not about us. It, we exist to glorify the name of Jesus. Um, it's alive and roaring. I love that. That's so African sounding. Uh, but we tremble at his word. Uh, on the code, fear won't stop us. We realize that the need of those around us is to be saved, and that need is greater than our need to be comfortable. Uh, we're the bridge. In addition to meeting one's physical needs, our goal is to be the bridge to one's spiritual needs as well. It starts in the home, and, and I want Taylor to talk about this for a minute. In accordance with the Word of God, we believe the advancement of the gospel starts first in the home. So tell us about that one. Oh, to to relate it as much as I can. I tell people all the time when, I, when I'm able to preach in front of congregations that, you know, as parents here in the U.S., we raise our children, you know, the hour we spend in church with them beside us, they see that, but it will mean absolutely nothing to them if they don't see us living that same way in our home all throughout the week. So I personally believe in that what you do in the home is what will affect your child later in life. It's the foundation that you place your child in, in the home, and the example you lead through the home that will give your child that biblical foundation so they may not stray from it in the future. Okay, and so these children are going to be placed in homes. Tell us briefly a, about that. A brick home, which will be uh, 30 by 25 feet, uh, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a, a living area. We'll have one room with six boys, one room with six girls that have been either abandoned, abused, neglected, or ultimately orphaned. And in the third room, that'll be accompanied by a Kenyan married couple, a Kenyan married couple that will take these children as their own sons and daughters and create a family. There's no more titles of abandoned, abused, neglected, or orphaned. Now just simply sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. And uh, the, the rest of the code is, we know this won't be easy. We are weak. He is strong. And the last part of the code is, we are all in. We stand as one behind the vision that God has given us. We're going to take a break here, and you're going to see a video that Taylor has made, and then we'll be back with some more uh, in, in our interview with Taylor Summers. Today was a big day for us at Zoe. We were able to do a small mission project where we were able to pass out uh, close to roughly uh, 200 kids in the surrounding village. We were actually able to announce the beginning of Zoe in the village. We were able to tell all the people in the village what exactly we're bringing, a children's home, a school, and a church. The reception was amazing and uh, it was a very humbling experience today to, to see the blessings that we'll be bringing in this village, as well as showing the love of Christ through Zoe, not only through our children's home, our school, and our church, but the opportunity that we'll be giving to the community around our village and around our tribe through the job opportunity, through employment, it's huge. We've already currently have eight people full time and the effect that we've seen on that already is tremendous. So in the upcoming years to be able to double that and triple that would be a humendous opportunity for this village as well as our organization. Uh, everybody around here, they are very happy of it. Uh, it helps us for earning our, our living and we are so happy for it. Uh, first of all, we have heard that uh, they are coming to help our children, nursery schools, class one and baby class. Uh, we are very happy for this organization and we congratulate you guys because this organization will take this group very far. I just want to take a second to thank the First Baptist uh, Cleveland VBS 2017 for what they did for us two weeks ago. The amount they raised for us in our wall project as well as the clothes they donated for today's mission project. I just want to thank you guys so much. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're back with Taylor Summers talking about the incredible ministry that he has, uh, that God has given him 
the Zoe Children's Tribe. And uh, my question to Taylor next, and I'm sure you're wondering this too, how do you get children? How are you going to find children to be a part of this children's okay. tribe? Oh, uh, well, a lot of times it's you're working in the village and you come across kids that are orphaned or neglected and you just simply you say hey you're coming with me and then you write it you go to the children's director and you write up a report well majority of the times you try to keep it in the children's officer's line you try to meet with him and he gives you children uh, particular to the age you would like uh, HIV positive or negative uh, total orphan or half orphan or will you be taking all of these uh HIV positive? Uh, right now, God has he's really placed on my heart to, for the vision that we have not to not particularly to take HIV positive, just to, because I've worked alongside organizations that do have HIV positive, and it can be so difficult, and I feel like we're not calling into that aspect just yet, but maybe in the future, but I tell people all the time, you never know who God's going to place in front of you. That's right. So, so you have a social worker or a director that yeah. helps... Yes, we have a social worker. His name is Paul. He's actually back in Kenya right now. We have a children's director that's over the whole county. There's an office in Katali, and we meet with him. We give him our particulars of what we want with our children, and he, he lines them up and signs them over. Okay, okay. Tell us about the little children that were living in the outhouse. Uh, you know, I had a group of friends that, that actually have an organization, uh, and uh they were called by another group of missionaries that way, way in the villages near the Uganda border. Uh, that two children that had no idea where their parents were, ages I think six and I think six and eight years old, and uh, they had been living in a small mud outhouse outside this little village for for a while now, and just nobody taking care of them, just getting scraps, and eventually. A local pastor found out about it and he got in touch with a group of missionaries and then from there the ball got rolling on what could they do to, to get these kids out of that situation and, and long story short these kids are right now actually placed in an organization just like ours. That's wonderful and to be clear outhouse we're talking about a bathroom. We're talking about a bathroom with a, a, bathroom. a hole that it's, there's no running water, there's no toilets, it's just a hole in the ground with a shack over it. So why are there so many children just running loose in Kenya? Uh, I would have to base it off of education, poverty. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, the government here takes pretty good care of our orphans and children who are foster children, but in Kenya it's the total opposite. When you have an orphan or a child that's been abandoned, then they become a burden on society. Uh, not many people can afford to take them in because they can barely feed their own children. So they're just, they're shunned out and they're put back into these outhouses. They're put on the streets and it's just something that you really don't think about here in the American culture, but it's so real outside of it. That reminds me of what Taylor shared um, when he spoke in our church on Sunday. And you want to go on and talk about that, about James 1.27? Yeah, in James 1.27, uh, there's, at the end, I use a, a quote from MacArthur that tells us as Christians we're called to take care of the widows and the orphans and everyone else in affliction. And I actually told a story of a young child that I deal with in Katali. His name is Nash, and right now he's living on the streets. And you know, he his father's died years ago, and his mother had forced him out. He was an alcoholic, and uh, you know, children like that who are in distress, who are in complete affliction. As a ministry, we believe it's our job to pull them in, to change their lives, give them, give them a home, to take them off a street where they're currently living every single night, every day, just begging for food. And you know, in that aspect of bringing them in a home, we believe it's our best aspect to connect them hand in hand with Jesus. So. Okay, I want to read James one twenty seven. It says, uh, "Pure and unblemished religion, as it is expressed in outward acts in the sight of our God and Father, is this." to visit and look after the fatherless and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself uncontaminated by the secular world. And so, so you explained so beautifully that pure uh, was coming like a child, um, an unblemished religion expressed in outward acts in the sight of our God is to take care of and look after the father, uh, the fatherless and um, the, the orphan and the yeah. widow. So uh, the future of your uh, Zoe 
uh, organization and, and the future of what you want to want to do. And I got this straight off of the website too. And I hope you go and explore the website. Uh, again, we'll put it up uh, for you, but it's Z-O-E, Children's, with an S, no apostrophe, tribe.org. But it's to begin construction on your first home in November of 2017. And then you hope to have, within five years, seven yeah. homes. Yeah. each one with 12 kids. Oh, wow. And then a baby home. Yeah. Where, so, the baby, so the babies will be raised in a separate little home. And, and then... Until they're aged two to three, and then we place them in a, our, one of our actual Zoe homes. Okay, okay. And then two Zoe halfway homes. Talk yes. about those. Uh, your Zoe halfway homes are for, that's further in the future, I'd probably say uh, an eight to ten year goal, depending on the age of our children that are first brought in. That is where when your kids get between 18, 19 years old, you want to put them in a home where they're able to take care of themselves. It just goes back to Kenyan culture. But during that time, you want to give them a year to live in this home. But during that time, you, we want to be teaching them skills. We want to be teaching them real-world ap application. So we may, we may give them opportunities outside of us. So when they hit that age that we're able to let them go back into society, it's from what they learned in these halfway homes. Okay, okay. And then uh, you have a Zoe school yes. that will form quickly, right? Yes, within the next two years, we're hoping to do an ECD school, which is the equivalent here to 4K, 5K, first grade. That'll be allowed for our kids and our tribe, but also the kids in the village to come in. And with that, we're able to teach them, of course, educational principles, but also biblical principles at the same time that affect not just our kids, but the whole surrounding village. Okay. And then will you grow with that? Like, will you grow up then the uh, next year at second grade and our goal, third grade? Our goal is to teach our kids the biblical principles uh, in our ECD school and then put them out into public school in our village and in the surrounding community, just like I was raised here in Cleveland in the Cleveland School District. So our children are able to be a light and dark and people people in our community can see the difference in our children and relate it back to Jesus. Okay, okay. And then you want to have a church? Yes, a village church. That'll, uh, we don't plan to have it on site. We plan to have it within the immediate surrounding area. And with that, we're able to accommodate the whole village and not just inside our wall. That's wonderful. Okay, and then you have uh, down here a clinic or sick home equipped with one full-time Kenyan nurse. Yes, we are. Uh, we would love to have a clinic that supports the whole village, that is able to supply day-to-day -day needs. And with the sick home aspect, uh, that would be for if any of our children in our Zoe homes is sick, we're able to quarantine them with a full-time nurse in this, this small house until they're well, and then we place them back in the home. So it doesn't affect the whole body of the home. So. One of the things I'm noticing is uh, Kenyan, Kenyan parents, Kenyan nurse. What, why, tell us why it's so important that they see Kenyan leadership rather than American leadership. Uh, because, I mean, there's just about one to zero percent that our children will ever reach this side of the world. And we want to put the leaders that are Kenyan, that they can relate back to them. We want to build Kenyan leaders ourselves. And there's no better way than placing them under good Kenyan leadership. There's only so much I can do, but if I can get someone, a Kenyan to walk alongside me and to point them to what the Kenyan is doing, then they have a better retrospect of what to do when they become, that, when they become older in society. That's so wise. That is really yeah. changing a culture, yeah, that's, isn't it? that's what it's about. That's wonderful. And then you have workshop and, a workshop and training center. Yes, that's for to help with our uh, halfway home. That's to when we have these kids, one okay. for girls, one for boys. Okay. During this time, they're through with education, but we're able to educate them on skills like auto mechanics, wood shop, That's tailoring, really cool. so we may get them a job whenever they're allowed to go out. I love that, okay. And then you have a guest house for short-term short, uh, short -term missions. Yes. Uh, we plan to have mission trips all throughout the year, so whenever you're, you're, over, in, you're over in Kenya with us, you'll be able to stay on site in one of our guest houses to have a godly effect on the surrounding village where you're in there all week so they're able to see how you live and the, the impact you can have as well. That's wonderful. And then um, a, a house for interns and long-term volunteers. Yeah, so that's one thing we can't wait. We can't wait to bring people, especially college-age kids, over to, to work with us alongside just a month or two months and we're able to place them on site in a, in a secure home 
so they will have the same impact seven days a week, 24 hours. I think my daughter's already contacted yes, you about that. <laughs> okay, and then uh, water wells. Yeah, water wells are big. I mean, I tell people, all, they ask me all the time, how are these people taking showers and baths? I say, they drop a bucket 63 feet below, below ground, they pull it back up, and then that's their bath. Wow. But our job is eventually to dig boreholes that will supply water for our whole, our whole five acres that will allow us to run clean water to our guest houses and to our Zoe houses as well. All right, we're going to pause for another video from Taylor and then we'll be right back. I'm by name called Wilson and uh, I come from Kinyoro area to make farm. I'm very happy to have met uh, Mr. Taylor and after a short uh, discussion we agreed on that I surrender my piece of land to him so that he can start a project by the name Zoe. I wish him the best. I hope uh, the project will be a success. I'm Charles Odor. I'm a technician who constructed the wall of Zoe Ministry. I believe we as people of community, we are going to benefit from this project. And this project will also give a chance, chance to our orphan children who don't have any assistant. Wow, what an amazing five months it's been. From a small vision plan in my heart to us officially laying the foundation for Zoe. What a ride it's been. At this point, we flip the page and we turn to a new chapter. We look forward to seeing what God's going to do over the next 12 months. And we've decided just to jump straight in and trust Him. We're getting ready to start construct Zoe on our first Zoe home. We've officially received our building plans from the architect and we believe it's time. As well as the first Zoe home, we have plans to build an ECD school, which is the equivalent to 4K, 5K, and first grade in the U.S. The school will allow us to educate our own children as well as children from the surrounding village. And our home will allow us to take in the brokenhearted and give them a place of refuge in our tribe. But there's a catch. We want your help with this. We would love for you to come to Kenya and help us build our first home as well as our school. When God planted this vision in my heart, I knew our impact should be felt just as well in the U.S., not only here in Kenya. And I believe this is the first step in maintaining our vision. 2018 will be a special year for us. It will be the first time we offer you the chance to come visit us here in Kenya. We currently have five mission trips scheduled from January to July. Whether you're looking for construction, VBS, evangelism, or even a small mission project, we would love to see you here in Kenya. It is my prayer that this ministry will go on to impact the lives of college students as well as offer a safe refuge for those who feel called to missions. So in 2018, we will offer a trip solely set aside for college students as well as the previous trips we have mentioned. We hope to see you in Kenya in 2018. As a ministry, we solely rely on the body of Christ for our funding. Over the last year, your prayers and support have been nothing short of amazing. And we believe as we continue to grow, God will continue to provide for us through His church. I want to thank all of you who support this ministry. May God bless you. So will you please consider financially supporting Zoe and our work here in Kenya? Your financial support will go a long way in helping us show the love of Christ. We can't thank you enough for your support thus far. We're back to wrap this up with uh, Taylor today, and, and we have two ways. He's going to share with us two ways that, that we can be involved. And so what are they? They both start with peace. So you can remember them. What are they? The first way, the most important way, is you can pray for us. And the second way is you can partner with us financially so we can change these children's lives and be the bridge and connect them with Jesus, our Heavenly Father. Okay, so uh, pray for them. I've got some things that he shared that we could pray. Uh, we could pray for the mission to solely point people to Jesus yeah. Christ. I love that. That is his number one. That was your number one prayer request. Every time. I love that. Um, and then you said pray for the Kenyan staff and children. Yeah, right now we have three staff, uh, full-time staff working around the clock. And pray for, pray for our future children. That's the children that are living on the streets right now that might be abandoned in outhouses just like these other children. You know, pray for them that we're able as soon as possible to step in and change their life. Yeah, they're out there right they, now. Exactly, right and now. And God knows who they are. Yeah. 
That's so exciting. And then third, we need to pray for Taylor. We need to, how, how can we specifically pray for you? Pray for me as I lead. Uh, this, it's not easy. Uh, I would encourage you to pray for myself as we go, as we go along leading this ship. Uh, pray for our five board members that are here in the U.S. as they help us lead as well. And we can't thank you enough for your prayers. Okay. All right. And then second is partner with them financially. Uh, again, at Joey, zoechildrenstribe.org, you can find how you can give. Yes. They are a 5013C. A 501c3 nonprofit. You can, you can go online and give through our online website, or you can mail a check physically. Okay, and soon you can sponsor when they get children, yes. you will be able to actually sponsor a child, yeah, which will, is exciting. You're able to help us provide their education, their housing, and all that. And another thing coming up soon on their website, you will be able to buy, do you see what I'm wearing? We, we can't remember what this is called, but my husband brought this to me uh, from, uh, he's been to Kenya, I think five times, my husband has. And um, this is one of the things he brought me that the women wear. And uh, you'll be able to buy these on Taylor's website. And all the proceeds, of course, will go toward uh, the Children's Tribe. And also uh, some beautiful other hand-carved things like this uh, Noah's Ark that you're seeing right now. Uh, you'll be able to purchase things like that through his website eventually. So I hope that you will uh, remember and mark on your, uh, on your browser, zoechildrenstribe.org. And uh, check it, and, and Taylor will have prayer updates, and you can sign up for his newsletter, and um, he can keep you informed, and you can be involved in this incredible ministry, which just slays me that you're 24 years old, and this is what God is doing on the other side of the world through you, which tells us that our God is a mighty God, and He, he can use anybody at any time that is willing to be used. And you made yourself willing. I, I can't thank him enough for the opportunity he's given me. It's nothing through what I've done. It's just what he's done through me. And it's, it's a blessing every single day here in the U.S. and overseas in Kenya. All right. Thank you for joining us, Taylor. And I want to close us by prayer. Uh, would you like to pray? Would you pray for us as we, as we close? All right. Father, we thank you for allowing us to just even be here and shoot something that rep represents your name, Father, that goes against what you've given us. We also ask that you bless Ms. Jennifer in this program. We ask that you also bless our tribe in Kenya and bless us in ways you never, we never thought were even possible. And this, Father, we ask that you provide, provide wisdom over this ministry, provide wisdom over this program in the going future. We can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And may God bless you as you always seek the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in every place. And I hope you'll join us again for Smelling Coffee TV.